This is the Austria Model 5. It was made by Hertzstark & Company from Austria. Hertzstark & Company was founded in 1905 and fell apart shortly after World War II. It was Samuel Hertzstark's company, father of Kurt Hertzstark. Look, here's eight-year-old Kurt in his elegant sailor suit demonstrating a Model 3. He didn't like to wear the accompanying sailor hat because it had a bow. Kurt Stark's calculators started off as arithmometer clones and he continued to develop them. The Zwilling model had twin carriages. Its design had a very complicated double step drum as uh, Ludwig Spitz had the patent for a more straightforward solution. Kurt Stark even added an electric motor to some of his late pre-World War I models. The 28 pound Model 5 was released in 1910. This is my Model 5. Between its old age and shipping damage, it took a lot of TLC to get it running right. The carriage shifter is not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to be vertical. But just take a look at those beautiful round twiddlers. The black and brass on this machine is, is just stunning. This crazy looking contraption is uh, the semi-automatic carriage shifter. There's a clock spring in there that can be wound, although I have the screw on there preventing it to be tightened. That little slider slides on the carriage, which will then be pulled by that clock spring back and forth. This lever activates the carriage shifter. You've got to kind of jam on it a lot harder than I want to. This lever clears the sliding inputs, which is pretty cool. The subtraction addition lever is kind of married to that horizontally sliding tooth rack there. And that took a lot of tinkering to get it working right. But it has to be working right, otherwise the carriage shift will not drop in the right location. This little sliding bar here is just the coolest decimal mark you ever saw. The Model 5 has some safety lockouts. This one prevents the addition subtraction lever from shifting during a crank. This one, when activated, prevents the crank from moving when the carriage is tilted up. So here I'll do a multiplication problem. First I'll clear the inputs. And I'll make sure that the lever on top of the carriage is switched over to multiplication for the carriage shifting. The uh, addition subtraction lever is set to addition and multiplication. And let's do 365 squared. My action on this is a little bit rough, so when it comes to division, I won't do the full problem. But it gets there. I, you do have to hit that little carriage shifting lever a lot harder than you want to hit it on a device that's 110 years old. So for division, we'll slide the carriage all the way to the right, making sure that that little sliding lever on top is set to division. We'll set the lever to division. Here are those little twiddler knobs. They look better than they, than they feel. But I'll set in the uh, dividend, 355. Now I'll do the lever. And uh, let's set in the divisor, 113. And so, after three rotations, it locks, it's semi-automatic. So now I have to reverse the last subtraction and shift the carriage. And you'd go on and on until you came up with the uh, proper answer. So again, you'll have to forgive this model because it's very stiff, the, the carries and the action. And I think a better term for this type of division is stop division. 
But uh, Samuel Hurstuck eventually added automatic division, fully automatic division. I had the front plate off so many times fixing it, and I never filmed the internals working. But here I'll lift it up and show the uh, step drums under there. It's really hard to get that front plate on and off, and I just didn't have it in me to do it again. Here's a back panel that comes off pretty easily with a couple screws, and there you can see some more, a better view maybe of the um, step drums. That horizontal bar is the um, action that connects the carriage shifting lever. My bell doesn't work, sadly. I did film the back of the back panel when I had it off one of the times, so you can see the clearing lever in action. And here's a photo of the front cover all the way off with the carriage tilted up. It's no wonder that Samuel Hertzstark won multiple awards for this patented calculator. In Kurt Hertzstark's later years, you could really get a sense of pride that he had for the calculators his father was making in this era before World War I. And there's no wonder why. Mine works pretty well for having been dropped on its head. And you'd be hard pressed to find a much better looking mechanical calculator. Thanks for watching.